this video, I'll show how to how to calculate the Thevenin equivalent circuit, you know, using a simple resistive circuit. But really, it kind of demonstrates the big picture. So, as I stated, I'm just assuming a simple circuit, which is just, it has just resistors, just for simplicity, simplicity but you can do impedances or reactances. So, I'm just assuming I have a source voltage, V1 is 9 volts, I have R1, R2, R3, R4, and I'm trying to calculate the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit, basically. Because think about it, when you plug something, for instance, A, B are like an outlet. So you plug a toaster or something to it. The toaster does not care what's connected to A, B like this way. All it cares about what is the voltage at this point here, at A, B basically. And that's the Thevenin voltage. And Thevenin is used in a lot of uh, power system analyses, you know, like short circuit and so on and so forth. So using a simple resistive circuit kind of demonstrates the, the concept. So basically, as I stated, I have here's the original circuit. I want to replace what is circled in red with this simple circuit. I have a Thevenin voltage in series with a Thevenin resistance, and I have terminals A, B. Basically, you can connect anything to them. So, how do I tackle this uh, circuit problem? So, step one, let's find the Thevenin resistance. So, in this example, I only have one independent source which is a V1 or voltage. If, I, if there were multiple independent sources, you have to use superposition. But basically, you turn one off and you leave, or you turn all independent sources off and you just leave one, you do the calculations, then you do the same thing for the other ones, and you use superposition, basically. If you have dependent sources, you don't those you, you don't turn off. So, but I'm just, using a simple circuit just to demonstrate the concept of Thevenin basically so without complicating it complicating it so then so in this case since I only have one independent source to find the Thevenin resistance you just apply a short circuit across the voltage source basically it's just a wire in other words you can see what I replaced the voltage source, source with a uh, wire basically so in doing that notice that r1 and r2 are in parallel so so this slash forward slashes double slashes just means in parallel so r1 r2 are in parallel so i called it r equivalent one so from circuits analysis, when you have two two resistances in parallel, so it's one over the inverse of one over the sum of the inverse of the resistances. So if you carry out the calculation, you get eighty five point seven one. So so I replace basically R one and R two with the equivalent R equivalent one here in this circuit. So notice now R equivalent R equivalent one is in series with R three. So I can get the equivalent resistance so I'm calling it R equivalent two. So eighty five so R equivalent one is eighty five point seven one plus R3, which is 100 ohms, so it's the equivalent is 185.71 ohms. So then I replace R equivalent 1 plus R3 with 
data equivalent, which I called R equivalent 2. So notice it's in parallel with, with R4. So R, the, their equivalent, since I don't have any more resistances, so that's basically the R7. So they're in parallel, so you do the same thing, 1 over 1 over R equivalent 2 plus 1 over R4. You carry out the calculation, you get 96.3 ohms. So basically that's the R7. So now we need to find the Thevenin voltage. So one way to find it is to calculate what I labeled here, current I2, that flows through R4, and use Ohm's law, basically. V4, or v voltage across R4, is R4 times I2. So that's one way. So if we want to do that, notice that I2 flows through R3 and R4. So that means R3 and R4 are in series. Oops. Sorry about that. So, so R3 and R4 are in series. Then R2 is in parallel with the sum of R3 and R4. So R3 and R4 are in series. And R2 is in parallel with R3 plus R4. So if you find the equivalent of them, then I called it R equivalent 5. So it's 1 over 1 over 150, which is R2, plus 1 over 300, basically 200, which is R4 plus R3. So the equivalent is 100 ohms. So, so here is R equivalent 5. So then to calculate current I1 is just Ohm's law, V1 divided by the total resistance, which is 9 volts divided by R1, which is 200, plus R equivalent 5, which is 100. You get 0 0.03 amps. Why did I calculate I1? Because I want to take advantage of current division to calculate I2. So notice R3, R4 are in series and their sum is in parallel with R2. So I can use current division because if I, I can redraw, redraw this circuit. So basically think about it as if there is just, so I1 is flowing through so you have R2 is here. So R1 is not in the, in the equation because it's in series with, with the I1, so it doesn't count. So R2 is in parallel with R3 plus R4. And we know I2 flows through R3 plus R4. So since they're in parallel, I can use current division. So I2 is equal to R2 divided by R2 plus R3 plus R4 times I1. So that's what I'm doing here. So in general, the formula in this case, so I2 is 1 over Let me erase this. So, but anyway, so I2 is equal to R2 divided by R2 plus R3 plus R4 times I1. So if you 
plug in the numbers, you get I2 is equal to 0 0.01 amps. So V4, which is the voltage across R4, which is basically the voltage across AB, because AB is connected across R4, which is the Thevenin voltage is equal to I2 times R4, so you get 2 volts. So this is one way. So I used Ohm's law and the, I found basically the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance. Another method is to use source transformation techniques. And we'll see, we'll find, we'll basically find the same results. So the, the concept is to reduce the original circuit to Norton and or Thevenin equivalent to using Ohm's law multiple times. And I'll, I'll show how, what I mean by that. So, so each time you make a transformation, if it's a voltage source, you put it in series with the equivalent resistance. If it's a current source, you put in parallel with the equivalent resistance. So, so I'm going to start from the original circuit. So I have a voltage. So I'm going to transform the voltage source to equivalent current source. So, so basically, I circled the V1 and R1 because those are the ones I'm going to manipulate. So the the source current is I1. So you see I put current and I put R1 in parallel with I1. So then the rest of the circuit stays the same. So what is I1 is V1 divided by R1. So 9 divided by 200 is 0 0.045 amps. So, so this I1 here is 0 0.045 amps. Then Notice that R1 is in parallel with R2. So I replace them by their equivalent, which is R equivalent 1. And what is that? It's 85.71 ohms. So now I can do voltage transformation. So this is what I, the circuit I have from the previous slide. So I have I1 in parallel with are equivalent one. Now V2 is the new voltage that I'm going to calculate is in series with R equivalent one. So basically I transformed because remember I said the voltage is in series with the equivalent resistance and current is in parallel. So basically I transformed this current source here to the equivalent voltage source so what is v2 is i1 times r equivalent one which is 3.86 volts so this voltage v2 here is 3.86 volts so notice that r equivalent one is in series with r3 so i replaced them with their equivalent, which I called R equivalent 2. R equivalent 2 is just the sum of the two, which is 185.71 ohms. So this is the circuit that I have. Now I want to transform it, this into the current equivalent current source. So the new current I'm calling I2. So I the Current is the source is in parallel with R equivalent 2. And what, what is I2 is V2 divided by R equivalent 2. So if you carry out the calculation, it's 0 0.02078 amps. Notice R equivalent 2 is in parallel with R4. So I can get that equivalent, which I called R equivalent 3. And what is that? So R equivalent 2 is in parallel with R4. So if you carry out the calculation, it's 96.3 ohms. So basically, this is the new circuit. There is no more resistances. 
so I can stop here. So this is the Norton equivalent circuit because you have current source is in parallel with the equivalent, the Norton or Thevenin uh, is Norton equivalent resistance. I can transform that to the equivalent Thevenin. So again, basically you take the volt, the current source and the resistance, you transform it to voltage source. So V3, which I, you know, this, the Thevenin, basically the Thevenin equivalent is I2 times R equivalent three, which is two volts. So V Thevenin is equal to V3, which is two volts. And R Thevenin is equal to R equivalent three, which is 96.3, which I calculated in the previous slide. So notice I got the same, the same results. So you can use source transformation techniques, or you can just use uh, Ohm's law current division, which whichever you are comfortable with. Thank you and have a great day.